Hey guys, my name is Ismas and today we're going to be looking at a fluid simulation in Blender and uh, in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at uh, how to simulate a tap flowing water into a sink like you see in the example here and uh, hopefully the steps that uh, we take here will be enough to give you a good understanding of how mantle flow works in blender which is the new fluid simulation in blender yeah so let's dive in and uh, get started i have duplicated this project uh with uh without the fluids uh, so that we have a sink we have a sink a tap and uh, this uh, drainage system here and if you want to get this project file, you can get it on my Patreon page so that uh, you can follow step by step. Yeah, so let's get in and uh, get started. So one thing to note is that uh, when you're working with fluid simulation or any type of physics simulation in Blender, make sure that uh, the scale of your object at least matches with the scale of the real world objects uh, because physics simulation in Blender is based off real world physics and the objects in the real world behave differently at large scales than in small scales. So make sure that uh, the scale of uh, your objects is uh, uh, the same. So you can see this is about is about half a meter. It's within uh, a good range. So uh, this is good enough. And uh, so the first thing we're going to do is define our domain and uh, that is just setting the boundaries of our simulation as uh, as a fluid simulation or any types of physics simulations in a 3D program require a lot of computation power and because the 3D space in uh, Blender is infinite, you would require infinite resources to simulate uh, fluids in an infinite space uh, like this. So that's why we use a domain object and uh, that would be a cube uh, to define the boundaries of your fluid simulation so that uh, Blender ignores anything, any space outside this domain and that will reduce on your computation requirements so i'm going to scale this down uh scale down my domain so that i can i only contain where my fluid simulation is going to be uh, for example there is no need for me to include uh, this area here because i know that my fluid is going to be contained within this pencil so i don't have to worry about any other space other than uh, this space here and uh, if i go to the top view i know also that uh, the fluid is going to be contained around this so i don't need uh, the domain to be this side or this side so i'm just going to uh, to scale it down uh, so that it only contains where the fluid is going to be so I can just and i know that uh, uh we're not going to have a lot of splashes as you can see from uh, my example here that uh, there is not a lot of splashes. So we are not going to see splash, uh, fluid splashing out quite a lot. So uh, I'm not too worried about extending all the all fluid particles uh, splashing out of the domain. So I can even scale this down a bit. Again, the smaller your domain, uh, the more resolution you can pack in your domain or uh, the faster your simulation is going to be. After setting up your domain, we need a fluid inflow. Uh, this is an object that is going to feed water into uh, the, the domain and uh, the obstacle. Uh, this is going to be our obstacle and uh, we can use uh, the tab or facet itself as a fluid inflow, but it has a lot of complicated geometry and uh, it would be just easier to use, say, a circle, a circle like this and then scale it uh, to the mouth of the tap like that and also make sure that uh, it's an actual mesh with faces so I'm just going to in enter into edit mode and hit F so that is a face then drag it in here and uh, if we have some fluid here if this emits fluid directly here it will seem like uh, the tap the water is coming directly from the tap to set up the, the domain to be an actual domain because right now it's still just a simple cube I'll just have to go to the physics tab and then under fluid change other fluid type to domain and uh, since we are simulating fluids change the domain type from gas to liquid if we play back we don't really see anything because we don't have an inflow object we added a circle but we haven't activated its fluid type just yet for us to be able to, fl uh, to flow fluids in so if I hit fluid here, I'll change uh, the type uh, to flow and uh, the flow type to liquid. And if I play back, see nothing happens. And uh, because if I select my domain and scroll down to, to my cache and type here, we have replay. So when you have the, the cache type set to replay, every time you play back, it will play whatever it was simulated previously. So we're still simulating 
the previous, we're still playing back the previous simulation, even when we have added a new uh, fluid object. So to make sure that we are simulating afresh uh, with this a new fluid object in taken into consideration, we need to make sure that we, we at least change one value in our domain. As long as you have uh, the type set to, the catcher type set to replay, if you want to refresh your simulation, you just have to change any value within the domain settings and that should recalculate your simulation. If you play back your simulation and nothing works, even after adding uh, an inflow object, make sure you go to the inflow object and turn, and turn on uh, underflow source, turn on is planner, and uh, again make sure every time you want to refresh your simulation, make sure you go back to the domain and change the any any value in the domain setting. I'm, I'm not sure why they're doing it like this because it can be very confusing. And then you can see now we have uh, some simulation. Another thing to note is that uh, if your inflow is too small, uh, for example, if I scale it down uh, to be the same size of my faucet. And, uh, again, you have to refresh your simulation by changing a value in the domain. I wish there was a button just to refresh the domain or something like that because uh, this can be very confusing. Uh, change any value here and uh, you can see the smaller the, the inflow, the fewer the particles you're going to have. So if I make this larger, again, have to refresh uh, the simulation by changing a value, you can see we have more particles, we have uh, increased the size of the inflow. And uh, if we make it just too small, it will get to a point where I have very, very little particles in the simulation that uh, I almost don't see anything. So I think, and that the number of particles you see is also going to be dependent on the uh, resolution uh, you, you set for the domain here. So. If I refresh this again, you can see we are getting less uh, particles. So again, if you make this too small and uh, you have a lower resolution, say something like 32, it will get to a point where I don't see any particles. So let's say something like 12. I see they're reducing and reducing and uh, at some point I won't be able to see any. So you need to maintain a balance between the scale of your inflow and the scale of your domain plus the resolution because the scale of your domain will also affect uh, the particle resolution, the resolution of your of your fluid simulation. So you can see now what we're getting. And uh, let me unhide this. I usually like to see through my domain as I'm working so I'm just going to go to the object properties and uh, under viewport display change this from solid to wire so that I can see through uh, my our domain. Now let's bring back the resolution here, something like 60, and I make sure that uh, the scale of our faucet, of our inflow object is good enough. Let's put it around there. Just make sure that uh, we are not wasting any resolution by making the domain large unnecessarily large so just make sure that you're containing yeah, so yeah now the problem we're having now is that uh, we have this sink and uh, the fluid is just going through uh, the sink so to make this a collider object all you have to do is go under fluids and set this, give this a, a type effector and this will just be our effector. But uh, the issue with this is that uh, this mesh here has a lot of detail, details. Uh, so you can see it has this hole here, this draining drainage hole. And uh, it just makes uh, this, it just adds more information to the simulation that is just going to increase the computation power or the computation time. So what I usually do is uh, if I have a mesh that has a lot of details to it that uh, are not really going to add to the simulation, to the fidelity or integrity of the simulation, I just make a copy of uh, the mesh uh, that I want to collide, to have collide with the fluid. Now let me isolate this for a second. And uh, after making a copy, then I can just get rid of those extra details. Uh, like uh, if I let this uh, whole 
exist and the water will just flow inside here and you can see that uh, we have a lot of details or stuff going on on the inside here and uh, it will just increase on the computation power uh, of our scene and uh, since we are not going to show anything inside here then it's just going to be a waste so what i usually do after making a copy i just get rid of these details for example these are uh, uh, this hole here you can get rid of that by just merging this into uh, the center and uh, i don't also have to maintain the other side of the uh, mesh so i can also just get rid of this part so that we just remain uh, with benson it is overall still the same shape as as our original uh, mesh uh, this here and uh, you won't be able to tell that uh, we are using a fake collider object instead of the actual op uh, collider object we're using so i'm just going to hide this and uh, just make sure that uh, it's not an effect object so let me get rid of the fluid property and then let's make sure that this here doesn't get any fluid property because you can see it has a lot of details that are just going to add to the simulation so let me just hide that for for now that make sure this is an effector and uh, make sure also you said planner is planner to make sure that uh, the fluid actually collides uh, with the meshes now if we simulate again again to refresh your simulation you need to make sure you change at least one value in the domain settings now you can see that uh, we have uh, the fluids colliding uh, with the benzene and uh, if i increase now right now if I go to the example, you can see we have a continuous flow of water in the benzene or in the sink. How you'd expect our tabs to behave uh, instead of what we're seeing here, just a single drop of water into the benzene. So to simulate a tap effect, all you have to do is change uh, the flow behavior from geometry to inflow and that will just inflow let water flow directly into your scene again we can refresh our domain or simulation now we see what we have now the fluids or fluid particles are a bit too light for me here so there are a few things you can do you can go to the domain our resolution here so something like uh, let's give it to something like 90 uh, that should reduce uh, the scale of the particles but it also increase uh, the computation power or the computation time. You can simulate the entire timeline, but uh, this is enough for my example. And uh, if you want to, at any point, turn off uh, the simulation, so to stop, to stop the tab from flowing, all you have to do is select your inflow object inside here and uh, just, unma just animate uh, the inflow uh, value here. So let me to show you, let me just reduce the resolution of this to something like uh, 60 can see we have the fluid flowing just like that so I want it to start at zero and I end at around 29 so for that I'll just select my inflow object let me just go to my outliner circle and uh, unmade other inflow value here inflow property so just set a keyframe here so from zero to 29 uh, the inflow uh, the inflow property is around is allowing water to flow into the scene then at around frame 30, I can turn off the inflow. Make sure that uh, you have this animated. So 29 is on, 30, it should be off just like that. So you can see I'm going between 29 and 30. You can see I'm turning it off and on between those flame frames. So I can go back to the domain and uh, you see that uh, after frame 30, uh, the inflow of the fluid will stop. You can see like that and now the fluid can flow as one so if we go to the render view here you see that uh, we're not rendering any of the fluid like you saw in the example here and uh, the, re the reason for that is that uh, we need to also bake the mesh uh, that uh, is going to be the final render of the fluid so to do that and uh, if you select the domain you can scroll down until you find until you find uh, yeah the mesh properties you have a few other th settings here you have viscosity diffusion all of that we can talk about in other tutorials at uh, this time we just 
focusing on the basics of the simulation. And uh, if you want to simulate the mesh, uh, which is going to be the final thing you render for your simulation, and just turn that on. And uh, now if we simulate again, you can see now, you can even now go to your domain settings and turn off uh, the particles or hide the particles uh, because fluid particles are like any other particle system. Uh, that, so you can turn that off in the modifiers. And remember, for us to be able to see through uh, the domain, I went to the object properties and turned this into wire. In order to, for us to see the mesh, we need to change this back to textured and uh, that we can see uh, the simulation. Now you can give this uh, a water material, which is basically glass. You can see now we have some water. All you have to do to make uh, the water look better, you just have to play with the domain resolution. So if I go back to domain, you can change the resolution to whatever your computer can manage and uh, that will give you better looking fluids. And uh, you can change also the catcher type from replay to all so that you can bake uh, the mesh without just waiting for the timeline to uh, play. You just hit back and I will be, be able to bake uh, the simulation. Yeah, that's it. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. If you have any questions, uh, let me know.